is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Old wives' tales have been circling around since we women were having babies. So what's the real science behind them? Find out what's the baby's gender and are these predictor legends actually true? Find out, am I having a boy or girl in this Pregnant Pukeology podcast, episode 14? Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst, nausea, vomiting, and headaches too. Or just place your Nomo Nausea ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at a bye-bye baby near you. And your little ones are always taken care of first with Nomo Nausea Kids, now available at your local CVS stores. Pregnancy humor in this edition may just make you want to pee your pants, like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with hilarious stories like going to the chapel, puking on a pastor, medical emergency confusion, and the expert in foods you don't want to come back up. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy humor, and knowledge is the key, of course, to help you survive these nine months and just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the real science behind what my baby could potentially be. Are there different times of day that I have morning sickness that could determine my baby's six? Or if my bump sticks out one way or the other, or if my legs are growing hair faster than Chewbacca, does this mean I'm carrying a boy or girl? The Science of Puke, Pukeology. So what makes a boy or girl for real? Chromosomes. You get one from mom and one from dad. Mom will always give you an X chromosome, so it's dads that make the sex of the baby, who either donate an X to make a female baby girl or a Y to make a male baby boy. Now, it's scientifically proven that the mitochondria, or the energy-generating station of the sperm itself, are very different between those who carry boy sperms or girl sperms. Boy sperms have a short burst of energy, and they can swim super fast, But girls are slow and steady and sometimes will end up winning the race. Boy sperm tend to die out faster because they use all of their energy to quickly swim upstream to reach the egg first. This is also why boys are usually created at the beginning of the start of the fertility period because the egg is higher up. It has literally just left the actual tube itself. And it's also why... Most boys are created at the beginning of this fertile period. Now, girls, on the other hand, can survive for days. They conserve energy. And by girls, I mean girl sperm. They can conserve energy, kind of like floating on your back uh, if you're stranded at sea versus trying to swim to shore. So as the eggs fall and they continue to fall, they can be encountered and fertilized by these girl sperm. Girls are generally made later in the fertility cycle, once all the boy sperm obviously have wasted all their energy and die off. Now that I got that off my chest about why we say (laughs) these crazy things about boys and girls, um, let's talk about these insane wives' tales. These are old wives' tales that I'm sure that you've heard and whether or not there's any truth to them. Have you ever heard the one that says, if you have morning sickness, you're definitely having a girl? Or if you have morning sickness in the afternoon, that you're having a boy? This myth, believe it or not, has some truth because of different hormones that are secreting depending upon the baby's sex at various concentrations at different times of the day. Boys itself generally tend to have less of the oestrogen, which is the hormone itself that is usually causing a majority of 
that intense morning sickness, and they tend to spike early on. This is why girls usually in utero cause the mother to have morning sickness in the morning itself. And that's generally tends to believe that boys, when you're creating these testosterone, which is a different type of hormone, it doesn't lead to as much of the morning sickness. But the good news is, is that there's no spike. Girls tend to spike, especially during the first trimester, um, where they're just rapidly increasing the amount of hormones that are being produced versus boys are kind of slow and steady um, to win the race, completely separate from what I just told you about boy and girl sperm. So... If I have a lot of hair on my legs and it grows super fast, does that mean I'm having a boy? This myth came to light because boys can cause that testosterone hormone that we were talking about it. And it is produced in much larger quantities than a girl. The umbilical cord is bidirectional. It transfers nutrients and waste but oxygen, food source, and etc. all come from the mom to the baby. So the baby and the mom's blood never actually mix or are not supposed to. I say that um, because if you do have O negative blood, you will be given Rogam uh, multiple times during your pregnancy so that your body doesn't produce any antibodies against subsequent babies that you may have next. Um, What these antibodies end up doing is they will end up killing the fetus. That is the reason why before Rogam was invented in the late 70s, early 80s, we were having a lot of miscarriages and of unknown reasons. This was probably one of the most significant reasons why. Now back on the topic, since the blood doesn't mix uh, with the moms, it will not itself derive hormonal effect from her baby's testosterone. Hair, skin, and nails are created by this keratinized cell, also known as keratin, which is a different type of cell altogether than what your actual skin has. Hence, why some non-pregnant women take prenatal vitamins to help their hair and nail growth. During pregnancy, your hair and nails will grow quicker, and it might be attributed to that pregnancy glow many people are talking about. There are many other valuable reasons to take prenatal vitamins, and if you're curious which ones to take or which ones have the best ingredients, listen to Pregnancy Pecology Podcast Episode 3, Why Take Prenatal Vitamins. Boys are larger at birth on average than baby girls, so that might be the reason why some believe that when a belly pops out in front, it means a boy. Remember that the estrogen and progesterone naturally make you hold water and fat. And since baby girls have a lot of both, you could also sense that you're feeling a little wide when you're pregnant with a girl, especially if this is baby number two, because your body has these muscle memory cells and they remember what happens when it was given relaxin, which is the stretching hormone. So you tend to show quicker than the first. Your torso also determines if a baby that you're carrying and how you carry it. Women with a shorter torso tend to look like they are huge in the belly, and that's just because there's no room for it to house that beautiful baby, regardless if you're carrying a male or a female. Do you believe in these Chinese birth gender charts? Well, this chart is becoming extremely popular in the Western world. Doesn't it seem like when one friend is having a girl, all of the next baby showers are also girls that you're attending? Well, if you've got a lot of baby showers coming up, you know that there's obviously no better gift than our sponsor, No More Nausea. It stops 80% of moms from delivering from having that nausea and vomiting. Okay, back from that commercial break onto the Chinese birth calendar. It's a chart that lays out the mother's age versus the month of conception and states whether you'll be having a boy or a girl. Regardless if you believe in it or not, there is still some science behind it. Zhu Eli, I hope I'm saying that correctly, leader of the communist Chinese government, was laid to rest in the 1976, but it was accredited with the countrywide health care reform starting in 1940s. Fun fact, you can find his picture on the front of Time magazine in 1951. His goal was to determine the relationship between the newborn gender and the characters of the parents themselves. Of the 3 million new babies born, he found a significant relationship amongst the baby's gender, the mother's age, and the lunar month that the baby was conceived. 
The correlation rate is even more accurate in moms ages 18 to 27 and have found that chances of having a girl were even higher in women's ages 18. 28, pardon me, to 34. This was the reason that the Chinese were encouraging young women to get pregnant because they wanted male heirs. It's also found that the paternal age had no correlation at all. So whether or not your husband is a young studly stan- stallion or uh, an older gent, um, either way, the chart won't change. If you're curious to see what this Chinese chart looks like, um, the gender predictor, we will actually have it on our website. So you can just click, click on nomonaja.com backslash pregnancy pugology podcast. Uh, and you can also get it. It'll be in the podcast description. Growing up on a Tuesday. One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. Bluey Bluey tells us that she may have a a hilarious puke story to just encounter the one that she told us recently. So, my wedding rehearsal is tonight, and my pastor didn't know that I was pregnant. All of a sudden, I was in the middle of saying my yes, I do vows. My soon-to-be husband looked at me with these eyes. I turned completely green and decided to give this pastor a little extra something. I'll call it his extra breakfast for that day. All of a sudden, there was nothing I could do. He doesn't know I'm in my first trimester of pregnancy, and I puked all over the pastor, my husband, my woman of honor, and the only thing that I could do to stop myself from actually continuously throwing up was I had to ask to see if I could borrow the flowers that they were carrying from the bridal shower, so I threw up in those instead. Thank you so much, Blueby Blueby, for that hilarious peak story. I had a nice banana spew the other week and saw a big blob of blood in it. <gasps> Yikes! I was really in a panic. I was wondering... Have I had so much horrible morning sickness that I've tore the lining of my esophagus or something else that could have terribly been happening, such as a bleeding ulcer? Can you tell? I'm a nurse. In my panic, I made my oh come and view the spew. So I ran to go grab my husband, asked him to take a look at it. Also asked my father-in-law, who happens to be a physician. All of a sudden, Both men soon to inform me that it looked suspiciously like a red grape from the fruit bowl I had just eaten. Oops, panic over. Thanks a lot, Jenny P2, for that hilarious puke story. So, months of this hideous puking experience leads me to be what I like to call the puke expert. Um, basically, I was thinking to eat whatever tasted in field like I wanted it because the baby, of course, was asking me to do it. At the same time, I have to say some things came up gross and not just terribly bad. For example, you know what feels the exact same going down as it does going up? Ready break or pasta, for example. You can literally puke back out your entire Italian cuisine without breaking a sweat, and the noodles are completely whole. The worst thing um, that I think are milkshakes. So after sitting in your tummy for about 10 minutes of congenialness, the taste of sour milk when you vom comes back up and looks like scrambled eggs. Bread is also extremely vile to puke up as the crumbs get stuck in your mouth and make you gag even more. That was disgusting, Strawberry Girl. But again, thanks a lot for giving all of our listeners a better understanding on what things to gag on and what things don't. Now, if you have a hilarious puke story like these lovely ladies that you cannot wait to share, you gotta send it to us. Send it to me at pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y at nomonaja.com or tweet us at pukeology so we can all have a good laugh. (laughs) 
tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So we learn about the science behind the Chinese baby predictor calendar. We also learned how you can actually make a boy or girl. But do you really want a boy or a girl? Let's talk about what you can do in order to ensure that you have a happy and healthy baby of the gender of your choice. So first, ovulation tests, like first response, they come with 20 test strips and will give you a yes or a no answer if you're ovulating. So basically, this is right around a one month supply. The way that it works is that it detects your levels of luteinizing hormone once you pee on the stick and you'll pee on the stick every day uh, for those 20 days and it will give you a reading whether or not you're most fertile. Now, Clear Blue Advanced Digital Test also tells you of the, your four most fertile days because of surges of this estrin 3 glucuronide E3G. This test is great if you're a planner like me. It will actually map out your four most fertile days so you can lock yourself up in the bedroom and make like the movie Ace Ventura, a wimbo up, a wimbo up all day long. You have the highest chances of making a boy because those are the first four days when your eggs are fresh off the tubal train. And as stated before, boy sperms are way better swimmers and they can get to the egg faster. The only issue is that if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, POS, uh, don't use it because you actually will have an inaccurate reading since the ovarian cysts secrete a very similar hormone and can give you a false positive. If you don't like peeing on a stick, for that reason, uh, you can actually use fertile focus. This is a spit test. Yes, you heard me right. A spit test. Um, the lens itself, you'll spit on this kind of like old school chemistry microscope, uh, where you have this rectangular piece, you spit on it, and then you use this magnifying lens to see if there's a crystal like pattern. Think Elsa, Anna and frozen. This crystal like pattern will actually tell you that you're ovulating. There are others that are way over $60 a month that can actually track your data and monitor your estrogen and luteinizing hormone hormones. But try the, these above first, because honestly, most people end up getting really positive results. Um, the same thing is if you want, want to use what's sometimes known as planned parenting mechanism, uh, where you actually take your internal temperature, you can do that. And you'll obviously see that when you have a spike in internal temperature, yes, you do have to put the thermometer in your vagina. Uh, when you do see that temperature change, you know that you are most fertile. So either you can go for it uh, in our case or stay away in the Planned Parenthood uh, realm. Although morning sickness is not the ultimate determinant of sex, some have studied morning sickness of different times of the day, which is associated with greater chances of one sex or another. A Scandinavian study actually found that girls in utero excrete 9% more of the oestrogen levels, leading to more nausea during the first trimester. Testosterone, on the other hand, secretion is very steadily increased throughout your pregnancies with no major spikes, unlike girl embryos. It is also been proven that the majority of hyperemesis gravidarum, extreme pregnancy that usually requires hospitalization, um, patients are carrying girls versus boys. And if you want to know more about you puking all day, every day for months on at end, and usually you'll end up ending up in the hospital, sorry to say, from dehydration. Learn more about HG, which is also known as hyperemesis gravidarum, in our Pregnancy Pucology Episode 6, Severe Morning Sickness. Now, to the science of having a boy and some tips and tricks on how to have one sex or the other. Have you ever heard that a man's boxers or tight jeans could potentially be affecting their ability to make a boy or girl? It's actually true. Ding, ding, ding. Men who wear tighter underwear keep the sack warmer and tend to have more girls. So if you want a boy, throw on some boxers on your husband and give those balls some natural flowing AC. Sex positions. Yes, ladies, let's talk about sex. Deep penetration will give a boy sperm a head start. So if you want a boy, try the unromantic positions, but still very effective, doggy style, having the woman stand up and down, or try straddling your man. Even though I know it's considered against gravity, remember boy 
sperm are really good swimmers, so they can go against the current and against gravity, if you know what I mean. Orgasm. Ladies, you need to come before your man in order to make a baby boy. Boy sperm survive in a basic environment. The vagina is extremely acidic in nature, and until a woman has an orgasm, it will remain in that very acidic state. The orgasmic juice is very alkaline in nature and helps the boy sperm to stay alive for longer periods of time. Ladies, your man should make you come before them and multiple times anyway, but even more importantly, when the sex of the baby that you really want is dependent on it. Now you know the science behind what old wives' tales can really tell you about having a boy or girl, whether you pop out in front, have super furry legs, all the way through your morning sickness spikes, and then some really cool tips and tricks on how to make a baby boy. It comes down to three things, underwear, sex positions, and orgasms. I hope I have given you the best answers for information about pregnancy and conception that there is to date. If you love Pregnancy Pugology podcasts, let me know. Give us a five-star rating or hearts for like. Don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share it with all your pregnant friends. Thanks again for listening to Pugology Podcast in Pregnancy, episode 14. Baby gender predictor, am I having a boy or a girl? Can't wait to talk to you guys next time. Pugology Podcasts, edutainment at its finest.